Hello everyone. Today I am going to discuss with you all regarding the risk factors and preventive measures for the cardiac disease. The cardiac disease are becoming very common nowadays because of the uh, non-communicable diseases like your diabetes, hypertension, etc. Now the risk factors can be broadly divided into three. The first one is your age, second one is sex, and third one is the heredity. Increase in the age more than 65 is a risk factors for heart disease. It could be because of the prolonged exposure to the risk factors or as an independent pathologic process. Degenerative changes are increases with the age and heart disease is very less common in the individual who is less than 30 years old. Sex. As we all know that the cardiac disease are more common in the men than in the women due to the high levels of the estrogen and HDL in the women, both of which have an anti-atherogenic effect. Men are six times more likely than the women to experience the myocardial infarction before the age of 55. More women have an unrecognized or a silent myocardial infarction than the men. And menopause plays uh, some non-specific role in regulating the disease process. The third non-modifiable risk factor is the heredity. Now the genetic derangement of lipoprotein metabolism, it predisposes the individual with the familial hypercholesterolemia. Now let's have a look on the modifiable risk factors. The modifiable risk factors are divided into two major and the minor. The major one is your, the first one is your hyperlipidemia. High levels of lipids in the bloodstream, especially the low density lipoprotein, reaches in the cholesterol and has a maximum association with the atherosclerosis. Several forms of cholesterol have been shown to play a role in the atherogenesis. For example, very low density lipoprotein, VLDL, intermediate density lipoprotein, IDL and the lipoprotein. Now there is something called cholesterol to saturated fat index, CSI index. It has proved to be a valuable clinical tool because it clearly shows the discrepancy between the dietary and the serum level of cholesterol. Concentration of saturated fat in any particular food item is about 20 times more atherogenic than its cholesterol content and there is 2% reduction in the heart disease risk for every 1% of reduction in the cholesterol level. So we have to take care of our diet. The second non-modifiable uh, risk factor is diabetes mellitus. The direct effect of glucose and insulin on the arterial wall, effect of circulating lipoproteins leads to the narrowing of the artery. The third risk factor is the hypertension. Now what happens because of excessive pressure in the vessels, mechanical injury to the arterial wall, it can lead to the increase in the blood pressure and it may go with the platelet aggregation. The fourth modifiable risk factor is the smoking. The nicotine absorbed into the blood and it leads to the vasoconstriction of the small peripheral vessels and it increases the chances of blood clotting. So that's why smoking has to be avoided. Diet. Diet which is rich in the fat, it will raise the serum cholesterol level. So appropriate diet has to be taken and high cholesterol diet has to be avoided. The minor risk factors, the first one is the obesity which is again a major non-communicable disease and it is mostly associated with the hyperlipidemia and the hypertension. The second one which is very common nowadays is a psychosocial tension that means the stress. Now the personality characteristics of the hostility and the angerness uh, may be more descriptive than the traditional term of the type A behavior. An exact mechanism is not known but probable is by which the predominantly psychological traits increases the risk for the tissue changes of the cardiac disease is believed to be related to increase the platelet aggregation and this contributes to the sclerotic component of the heart disease. The third one is oral contraceptives. Now the recent research it shows the mixed data with regard to the possible protection from the early generation of oral contraceptives for the atherosclerosis. Fourth one is your role of alcohol. Now the regular or the high alcohol use can hurt the liver as well as the heart and it can lead to the diseases of the heart muscle, cardiac muscle called it as and it leads to the cardiomyopathy. And drinking alcohol regularly, it can increase the blood pressure. Now I am going to discuss the very important modifiable risk factors because of the continuous sitting and the less of the physical activity. We all are coming into the physical inactive group. 
so it remains a significant risk factors for the development of the heart disease and lack of adequate exercise is the most prevalent risk factors for the heart disease aerobic exercise has a beneficial impact on many uh, cardiac risk factors and for example low to moderate intensity exercise has been shown to increase the hdl level by as much as 11 to 28 percentage so regular aerobic exercise is also known as uh, also known to affect the many of the cornerstones of the coronary artery development now we have to go with the endurance training so benefits of the long term endurance training it increases the fibrinolysis decrease the platelet aggregation and for that we can go with the walking running jogging swimming cycle uh, cycling walking on a treadmill and any other relevant aerobic exercises now exercise of adequate intensity duration and frequency is beneficial in preventing the cardiovascular disease and improve the health so exercise is must for the prevention of the cardiac disease treatment of the cardiac disease and the management of the complications after the cardiac disease and the best person who is a physiotherapist who is popularly nowadays known as a movement therapist who will help you for reduction management and the treatment of the complications by the cardiac disease so physiotherapist and the physiotherapy is a treatment of choice for the one of the treatment of choice for the management thank you